Hey, Mary here, and I'm here to tell you about some of the board games that we have for circulation. So Thanksgiving's coming up, and then Christmas is right around the corner, there's going to be a lot of downtime. And this year's a little bit different with COVID restrictions. Uh, we can't really hang out with a lot of our extended family, but that means we get to hang out more with our regular family. So what's a great thing to do? Play some board games. Um, so, I'm going to bring you some stuff to you that it's a little bit different, uh, not quite the Monopoly you grew up playing, these are actually fun. So, uh, my first game is called Ink and Gold. This is a really cool game, imagine you're all Indiana Jones and you're looking for uh, buried treasure and artifacts. Uh, it is a push your luck game, which means you keep playing until certain traps and um, poisonous snakes are, are tripped. And then uh, if you've pushed your luck too far, you lose that round and you get no gems or you get very little gems. Uh, but you can always like choose to like grab a bunch of stuff and get out of town before all of the traps get triggered. So Ink and Gold's pretty fun. It also has really cool little gems. Um, right. My next one is Dr. Eureka. This is great if you have like elementary school kids. Um, so Dr. Eureka, he has a secret code. Um, and the codes are the little marbles in the test tubes. And each card has a different um, code. So you're trying to match the marbles to the test tubes by pouring the test tubes into each other. Uh, but you can't use your fingers. You have to just, you can, to like pick the marbles up, you have to be able to pour them in and out and get the right combination. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It's really fun. I'm trying to go as fast as you can. So sometimes the marbles scatter everywhere, which is hilarious and frustrating, but it's a super good game. All right, so my next game is one of my favorites ever. Uh, this is a quick game. Usually, sometimes it can go a little bit long depending on the conditions that are met. So it's called Flux. And this card game, uh, as you play, uh, the game, the first rule are draw one, play one. So you draw one, you play one. And then eventually, new rules get added. And so sometimes other rules counteract other rules and they get erased. Um, and so the game is always in flux. Uh, and the win condition is always changing. Uh, so it's a quick game, it'll make you think, it's super fast, and it's super fun. Um, Alright, and that's a good game for like, probably middle school and up, or 8 and up I would say. Uh, my next game is Quirkle. Uh, it's this really cool game where you have all of these cool symbols, and you're trying to get the most points. Um, it's kind of like, instead of using Scrabble tiles, it's like using these cool symbol color tiles. Uh, so the win condition, it's like this mix and match, like you want to get them all of the same color or you want every single shape in a different color. Um, if you can get all of them in the line, you can get the, the complete pattern, you get a corkle and you get an extra 15 points. So you always want to do that. And in our house, when you get the corkle, you yell corkle um, and then you go on to the next, next uh, person. Uh, so it's super fun. This one probably you can play is another 8 and up. Um, next game is a really pretty game. It's called Lanterns. Uh, this one's probably more, let's see, yes, this one's also eaten up. Uh, so it's a Chinese lantern festival. It's the harvest festival and you have these different tiles um, that you place, but you can only place them by the cards that you draw. Um, so it's a pretty cool, we call this like a, I believe this is called like a card drafting game. So you have a certain amount of cards and you can only play these, these tiles um, these certain ways. Um, and you're trying to get like the most points. And the cool thing about it is once the, the game board is played by placing all of these cool like, uh, flower tiles with these different patterns. So at the end of it, you have a really beautiful pattern. It's really neat. And this one usually lasts about 30 minutes. So it's a good quick game. Um, my next one is a little bit different. Uh, this one ages 12 and up. Uh, this is Betrayal House on the Hill. So... Imagine everybody is in at a haunted house and you and your friends go there and you are investigating this house to see what lies behind the doorways. Um, as you go, something will happen, a condition will trigger, and one of the players will then become probably the traitor. Uh, this game is really fun because it comes with um, two rule books. One is for the players, uh, one is for the traitor. Uh, so the traitor has a win condition, and then the people playing against the traitor have their own win condition. Uh, and so you're trying to trying to like race to the end. Uh, it is a little complicated, but it's not too complicated. And what's really cool is uh, you rarely get the same win uh, same story conditions twice. 
So each, each time you play, it's a different story, and it's super fun, and it's super cool, and it's also one of those games where you build the board as you go, so each game is always just a little bit different, and it's, it's really cool. Um, also, it's got that level of, like, having a deception game into, like, a board game, too, which is pretty neat. Um, yeah. So this is Ticket to Ride. Uh, Ticket to Ride is really cool, so everybody is trying to build the longest railroad um, with your conditions. And you have a map, and you have these little cool little trains you place out, and you have these routes that you're trying to follow. Um, and if you can complete your routes, you get a ton of points for it. And whoever gets the most points wins the game. It's super fun, and it's also super just cool. Uh, I like the whole um, aspect of having the little plastic trains that you lay out on the route. Uh, but you, this is definitely a game where you don't want to accidentally knock the table, because sometimes the route can skew. Um, but it's super fun. Um, so yeah, and this one's usually for ages 8 and up as well. Uh, this one is one of my favorite games that I don't play too much anymore. Uh, but I love it. So it's a it's a different board game than you're used to. It's called Flick'em Up. It's a Wild West game that has different story conditions. So there's a book that has different um, Wild West type story setups. And one person usually plays as the outlaw, and the other play usually, person usually plays as like the good guy. And this game is a dexterity game, so you are literally flicking the pieces um, at each other. So like when you have like the sheriff's trying to like you know shoot the bandit, you're actually flicking the little gray disc across the table. Um, and there's like little cactuses and uh, or cacti, excuse me. And it's just like really fun and kind of cute and adorable. Um, and it's probably the one game where you literally can throw things. Well. Not throw, but you can flick things, which is pretty fun. Um, so yeah, so this is just some of the games that we have for checkout at Craigan Library. So, you know, come on in before we close for Thanksgiving and um, check it out. So it's, it's, a, it's a fun time. So uh, yeah, hope to see you soon.